I have about 10 to 12 hours of open field fighting experience with a fully expertise William Wallace because past seven opened like 36 hours ago, something like that, maybe a little bit more. And most of the fighting has sort of died down at this point. But throughout the past seven fights, I was paying close attention to how my William Wallace with Liu Che was performing. So that way I can give you guys my best possible advice when it comes to investing in William Wallace with actual in-game KVK fighting experience. So today we're going to go over over all of the pros and cons of William Wallace, who should be using him, who should not be using him, whether you need to expertise him. We're going to go over all of that with the understanding that, of course, this is still a sort of early look at William Wallace, right? 10 to 12 hours of fighting is really not that much in the grand scheme of things. And there could be more developments over the next, you know, couple of weeks or months as players continue to use William Wallace. But I'm going to try to give you guys my best assessment of William Wallace's performance in Rise of Kingdom so we can decide if he is a must have commander or not just as a little bit of foreshadowing i think that a lot of the dueling results that are floating around youtube right now are really really ambitious i would say i think they paint him in a really good light when i think that that's not the whole story so we're gonna go over all of that in today's video but first what's going on guys cheers if you appreciate these investment advice videos make sure you drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton seriously like it's one of the best ways to support your favorite creators and consider subscribing to the channel you might think that you're subbed but you're actually not so just go ahead and double check okay no pish posh ladies and gentlemen we're jumping right into the reports here because i know that's what you guys are interested in seeing so here we can see our first report that we're going to go over here we have a 409 percent kill point ratio so we have 212,000 kill points for my william wallace with liu che and we have 52,000 for the enemies taking a look at the next report this is a really small report we have 96,530 to 16,840 this is a 574 percent kill point trade now this screenshot is not that useful but let me explain here really quick okay when i was filming all of our fights which i do typically film a vast majority of the fights even though i'm not streaming even though i don't usually make videos out of it i like to film the fights that way I can you know use it in some future video if I need it or whatever the case might be and as I was skimming through my uh reports I didn't I never actually opened this one but I did get to see the trade ratio which again not that much in information here like this could be a tiny 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 report right like it could be 30k to 10k or 3k to 1k right it could be nothing but I wanted to at least throw it in here this is a kill point ratio for your consumption same thing here 306 kill point trade that could be a massive report it could be a tiny report I'm not going to put that much weight on it but here we can move on to another actual report we have 594,000 to 176,000 so that is a 337 percent kill point trade here's another uh, little anecdote uh 426 percent skill point ratio 455 370 okay let's move on to another report we have 656,000 kill points to 180,000 kill points over here another anecdotal kill point trade here we've got another full report 625 to 157 moving on to another report we have 923 to 311 so that's a 300 kill point ratio the previous one was 398 moving on to the next report we have 181,000 to 46,000 so we have 388 percent kill point trade moving on to the next one we have 797,000 to 170,000 so that is a 468 percent kill point trade next report we have 238,000 to 45,000 so that is a 529 percent kill point trade and that is it for the report now that is obviously not all the reports those are just all the ones that I captured as you can see here like there's stuff on the screen like this is just what I pulled from the footage that I had and unfortunately with Karak ceremony today uh, I don't actually have any real battle reports in my current mail uh unfortunately so that is that I do have one trade here with uh Liu Che Alex I wanted to test that out a little bit which is pretty nice but on average from all the reports that I was able to pull together my William Wallace primary with Liu Che secondary was trading on average about 3.94 to one so let's just round it up let's say it's a four to one trade on average for my William Wallace with Liu Che that's a pretty good consistent outcome and if you look back on the battle reports that I showed most of them fell between the 300 and 400 percent range some of them were a little bit higher but not many were much lower right and so that really is a, a solid and consistent performance from William Wallace which is definitely a pro right his output his damage output and his performance was very consistent we didn't see like massive spikes up and down I think this is something that you see with commanders such as Guan Scipio right at least from my uh, experience 
Juan CPO will have one like insane report, like an over a thousand percent or like a 900%. And then another report will be like 150, right? And it, it'll really, it'll fluctuate a lot. Okay. At least that's my experience. We'll talk a little bit more about Guan later in the video, but it seems that William Wallace with Liu Che is very consistent. That is one thing that I definitely noticed. There was no insane reports. There was no horrible reports. It was a very consistent commander pairing, which is definitely something that a lot of, a lot of players are going to want. Now, another thing that William Wallace is great at that you've seen a lot on YouTube over the past couple of days is that he is great at dueling in one V ones. William Wallace performs really, really well. And later in the video, hopefully I remember to do this, but I do have some reports from William Wallace rallies here in, in my KVK, which performed actually pretty well. And so I'm wondering how he's going to perform with CPU Emilianus when he comes into the game, because he's already performing well in rallies, which was kind of a surprise to me and many others in my kingdom, but it is what it is. The data is what it is. So now that we've looked at some of the reports, let's go over a couple of more pros for William Wallace. Okay. He's consistent. He's great at dueling. You can use him in rallies. If you are an infantry rally main, I don't know if he's going to be part of the infantry rally meta once we get CPO Emilianus, but for right now he performs okay there. The other thing is that, and I mentioned this in my previous video, but it seems to be the case that this fight or flight talent, unless they change something, this is AOE. And by that, I mean, if you pair William Wallace with Liu Che, then you are getting a five target 45 rage reduction debuff with that smite talent. Now, in order to do that, obviously William Wallace has to be primary. And so that is a massive pro for William Wallace. This fight or flight talent is insane with Liu Che. And the only way to do that is to have Liu Che paired with a smite damage commander. Right now, all we have is William Wallace. And so this is kind of exclusive at the time of recording this video to William Wallace, which right now works in his favor in the future. However, if we see more open field, uh, infantry smite talent commanders, then William Wallace might lose that edge a little bit, right? Cause right now this is exclusive to him, but in the future it might not be. But for right now, this is really good with Liu Che. And there's also no cooldown here. So for example, if you hit them with your active skill 2,400, then you do a 45 rage reduction. And then if they're hitting you back on the next turn, you're going to deal another 300 with another rage reduction. Cause this is also smite damage. And then on the turn after that, you're going to be dealing uh, the 2,500 or 2,250, sorry, from Liu Che. That's also smite damage. So you're going to deal another 45 rage reduction to the target there as well. And then you also have like the instant proc smite damage here. Like there's just so much little smite damage pops with this pairing that you are going to be reducing the enemy rage like crazy with this talent. And this talent is wild. Now I will say that William Wallace in game is performing better than he did in my pre-release test that I made a few videos ago. And the reason for that, I think is because the smite talent tree, I believe is just a little bit better than the sort of pre-built sort of custom smite tree that the developer of the rock battle simulator put together because it was just a guesstimation. We were just curious, right? So I think the smite talent tree is actually better than we initially thought. And that is why William Wallace is performing better than the pre-release test results, which is a good thing, right? I, I like that a lot. Commenting on the talent build. This is the talent build that I showed off in the previous video. And I did use this talent build for all my testing. That way I could get a general idea as to how good I think it is. I actually don't think I would change this. I know a lot of people are grabbing hold the line and getting rid of, you know, either this undying fury or they're getting rid of some of the March speed or something like that really I, I don't know maybe that's the play maybe it's not uh, I just don't really see I mean I get that hold the line is good but you actually have so many good things in both these talent trees that it's like you have to get rid of something and one of the biggest complaints from my alliance members I didn't really have this problem but their biggest complaint was how slow William Wallace was and I think if you were running Liu Che with CPO Prime then you might experience a bit of a slower commander pairing right because we have 20 percent March speed here and Liu Che also has 20 percent right 20 percent on the second skill here but if we look at CPO prime well he has 15 and then 10 outside of alliance territory so that's 25 and so outside of alliance territory the Liu Che and CPO combo or the way around will be slightly faster than the Liu Che with William Wallace so that is definitely something that people have noticed that the William Wallace is kind of slow I didn't really experience that that's just me but I also again went to grab all this extra March speed here and I think that that does make a pretty big difference I mean that is literally the difference it's a five percent difference here you've got six percent or here or here right so I think the March speed here is super important for William Wallace also if I look at like for example my Guan Yu talent build this is what I use on Guan Yu I don't grab hold the line for Guan Yu either and he's great I he performs really well right and so like I don't I, I feel like a lot of people are obsessing over hold the line here but this only does something when you're hit with basic attacks I'm not saying it's a bad talent but I'm saying like between this which works only when be being hit and the March speed which works 
at any time that you're moving i mean i prefer the march speed right now will this give you better trades sure it could give you better trades but the march speed can get you in and out of battles faster and to me that is very very valuable so i don't think i'm going to change my william wallace talent builds if i were doing like a rally or something then yeah obviously i would grab hold the line maybe on the line we find that like the trades are just so much better with hold the line that you grab it but really i think this is a micro optimization and it really comes down to do you want this little bit of action tankiness or do you want to be a little bit faster in the open field i prefer the speed you guys can prefer the tankiness if you want but this is the talent build that i went with and i think it's pretty solid now another pro for william wallace is it seems like you're not gonna have to expertise him now i've been thinking about this a lot and unfortunately i did expertise him right away so i can't test this i think that if you did a 5515 william wallace that's probably the most consistent way to go primarily because this third skill even at one you still get a 20 percent damage increase uh every you know four out of five smite shots over a thousand right which is good and you take two percent less normal damage whereas as this fourth skill like for example this has a 10 second cooldown so this bonus to smite damage will only work on one commander at a time right because it's either going to work on his active skill or it's going to work on Liu Che's active skill second to him or if you run Gorgo behind him or whatever this is only going to work for one active skill this talent however or sorry skill will work on every smite shot that you do with both commanders right so this is a 20 percent bonus to your active skill for him and it's 20 percent bonus to this little shot here it's also a 20 percent bonus to all of Liu Che's damage here and his instant proc right so all in all I think the fourth skill is probably slightly better than the third skill again I haven't tested this because I expertise them right away I don't know for sure maybe a 5551 is better I suspect that you would want to do 5515 really I think both these talent or skills should be similar and also you can't guaranteed get a 5515 anyway so what you could do is max the first two skills and then just unlock the last two and put four talent points and however they land is how they land you could do that as well so that is definitely a pro though however I, I think that is a really good uh, pro for William Wallace is that you don't really need this expertise right I talked about this before 10 second cooldown is garbage a thousand damage factor shield mighty shield is decent because it does stack with all the other shields out there but it's still only a thousand damage factor and so it's probably only gonna last one or two turns or one and a half turns something like that removing your slow effects is nice but is it worth 310 legendary commander sculptures I don't know I don't think so but maybe and so I think a pro here for William Wallace is that you definitely don't need to expertise him but he will be better expertise obviously right obviously if you just got all the points here then he's that's the best you could get for William Wallace another thing that I noticed is William Wallace actually performs pretty well in Sunset Canyon especially on offense where you can control where he goes and by that I mean and I'm going to show you here so this is me attacking a, a player much stronger than me but this is my um William Wallace with Liu Che down here and the reason that he works so good in the off lane on offense is because the active skill on William Wallace will deal 300 smite damage to every target hitting you which means in this scenario I am always getting that but remember you're also always going to do a 45 rage reduction to each of those targets right because they're it's all smite damage and so not only are you getting the max value out of his active skill every single time it fires but you're also getting a ton of rage reduction for at least three of those four armies that you're hitting and that just slows down their rage or their active skill output significantly right and so what I found is that um he does perform pretty well in the off lane here in Canyon again a little bit better on offense because you can always stack the deck in your favor uh not so much on defense but I do end up going ahead and winning this trade which was nice now we'll have to see if William Wallace ends up in like the Canyon meta don't know if he will or not but anecdotally from the day or so that I used him he seemed to perform pretty well however you're not going to invest in a commander for Canyon anyway at least you shouldn't be right and so all in all William Wallace has performed really well the question though is is he worth investing in and if you're asking that question then that means you probably already have Liu Che no question in my mind Liu Che is better than William Wallace that is like I don't think anyone would really argue that I think Liu Che is definitely a better commander but whether or not you invest in William Wallace will depend on who you're currently pairing your Liu Che with and I think a lot of people over the past you know six to nine months or however long Liu Che has been out have been using Liu Che with Alexander the Great and for that reason in my mind at least Alexander the Great has been the number one competitor to William Wallace in terms of his slot in my open field lineup and in my last KVK my Liu Che Alex performed really really well in fact I have the data here on average my Liu Che Alex had a 5.57 to 1 trade okay in my last KVK and you can look at all those reports in my KVK recap video you can double check all my work if you want it's all there but five and a half to one trade with Liu Che Alex is really good 
I even went in and removed the outliers and it was a 4.47 trade to one. Now, if you remember earlier, I showed you all the reports from my William Wallace Liu Che from the past 30 hours or however long I've been fighting. And it was about a 41 trade. Okay. So in what I'm saying here is in my last KBK, Liu Che Alex performed better than William Wallace and Liu Che in my current KBK. Now, that is not apples to apples, right? Because I'm literally fighting different people, right? And so like, you have to keep that in mind, but in both KVKs, our alliance was stronger than the enemy that we were going up against. So in both scenarios, we had a nice advantage there. So it's not like in this KVK, we're going up against a much harder enemy. It's not really the case in both scenarios. I would argue that both enemies that were fighting were a little bit weaker than our alliance. That's just been my experience throughout this KVK. Uh, obviously we're going to go into King King's land soon. We're going to go up against 79. They're going to be very, very strong. And so I'll get even more data to support this or reject this hypothesis. And again, that's why I'm saying these are early results for me. But that being said, based on last KVK's data and what I currently have from this KVK's data, Liu Che Alex performed better. Okay. So that's going to piss some people off. So let's talk about that for a little bit. First of all, one thing we have to consider about William Wallace compared to Alexander the Great is I think William Wallace could actually age better. I think right now, Alexander the Great is hanging on by a thread because he works really well with the expertise on Liu Che and he did just get a double relic. And that's another thing I should point out. I think in my last KVK, I don't think he had the double relic. I think he only had one relic. So he's like literally better now than he wasn't my last KVK. So keep that in mind. But Alexander the Great, I, I think right now he has one good pairing and that's Liu Che and it's working really, really well. Whereas William Wallace could potentially be paired with like any infantry smite damage commander in the future, right? Which is crazy. And so I think compared to Alexander the Great, William Wallace might age better. I think he's probably going to age better because of the smite tree. And also he does not have to be expertise. Whereas I feel like Alexander the Great does have to be expertise. So in a world where the trades with Liu Che Alex were slightly better than the trades for William Wallace Liu Che, I would argue that it depends on the status of your Alex. Is it worth expertise Alex right now in 2024 compared to William Wallace? Probably not, right? Probably not. William Wallace, you can get away with a cheaper build and he'll probably age better. And that's just kind of my prediction for the future. I have no way of knowing that, right? There could be another commander that comes later that is also a perfect pairing for Alexander the Great. Like who knows, right? But at the time of recording this video, it's not abundantly clear to me that benching Alex for William is a significant improvement. In fact, I've had the opposite experience. It seems to me like my Liu Che Alex performed better. Now, again, it's way too early to tell. It's way too early to tell. And I want to make that very, very clear. I'm not, I'm not saying that Liu Che Alex is better than William Wallace Liu Che. But what I am saying is based on the anecdotal data that I have right now, it did perform better for me. That's just, that's just the data. I don't know what to tell you guys. So in order to understand that, let's actually compare Alex to William Wallace, right? Cause they are doing different things and there's pros to both of them. We talked about the pros from William Wallace. He's actually very supportive with that smite talent tree with the fight or flight talent here. But the reason that Alex actually performs so good, even though he actually doesn't duel very well, right? William Wallace duels extremely well. Alex does not. But the reason that Alex gets such insane reports and great trades is because the instant proc damage here is just easier to use it's just easier to use it's just open and shut case that is what makes Alex so great with Liu Che you go in and out of fighting right and that's one of the things that a lot of people need to understand is when you're actually fighting in the game compared to just dueling and just getting test results through dueling when you're actually fighting in the game you're going in you're hitting the enemy and when the enemy hits you back you're retreating back to your ball a little bit resetting your position and then going back in and hitting the enemy again and in that exchange you might not have gained enough rage to cast an active skill but you could have gotten lucky enough to cast the instant proc from Alexander the Great and you don't have to time it you don't have to think about it it just happens passively occasionally and that just is easier to use you don't have to manage or micromanage your rage bar you don't have to think okay I got to get two more basic attacks in so I can cast my active skill before I can retreat back to my ball you don't have to think about that with Alex it, you just do it you just go and you pop off the other thing is with Alex secondary let's say you are able to cast your active skill with your primary, but not your secondary, right? Like you retreat in between active skills, which does happen in that scenario. You're always getting your Liu Che active, right? He's always going to pop his active skill in those scenarios. Sometimes Alex might not cast, right? Cause you're retreating or whatever the case might be. Also, I mean, this is a shield and debuff. So whether or not this cast isn't that important, I mean, it's good, but it's way better to cast your AOE on Liu Che. I mean, this is massive damage. This is like the best AOE in the game, right? Okay. So this is really, really important. You always want to cast Liu Che's AOE and by having him primary, 
you're guaranteeing that at least that will happen right even if Alex doesn't cast and so having Liu Che as the primary with Alex secondary means that it's just easier to cast the active skill from Liu Che and it's easier to get the instant proc skill shots from Alex by going in and out of combat whereas with William Wallace primary Liu Che secondary in the scenarios where you're going in and out of combat if you don't reach your rage bar then you're not going to cast your active skill now you do have the small instant proc here on Liu Che which is great but you don't have that massive one that you do on, on Alex's second skill. Also, let's say you do cast your active skill with William Wallace and then you retreat before your Liu Che casts. Well, now you've casted your powerful single target skill, but you retreated before the AOE went off, right? And this AOE is way better than the active skill on William Wallace, no question, right? And so sometimes you might not cast your Liu Che's active skill, and that is a downside so all of this to say getting big damage out of Alexander the Great secondary to Liu Che primary is just easier there's you don't have to think about it it just happens it just it just works out in your favor more often than with William Wallace Liu Che also if we're comparing raw stats you're just gonna have more stats with Alexander the Great than you are for William Wallace now what we're looking at is Wallace versus Guan Yu versus Alex okay and we'll talk a little bit more about Guan Yu in just a minute I did mention that earlier but in red you see the attack stat in blue you see the defense stat in green you see the health stat and in teal you see march speed okay and what we're looking at here for william wallace well we know he has 30 percent attack and 10 percent health that's on his second skill and 20 percent march speed and if we look at alexander the great i'm assuming if you have a shield for three out of ten turns then on average you'll have about 58 percent attack 29 percent defense this is including his relic by the way 20 percent defense on the relic and 30 percent march speed okay so on average and again this is napkin math this is going to vary depending on the fight right depending on how many shields you get from allies and things like that the more shields you get the more defense you'll have on average versus attack because that's just how the skills work with alex which is really annoying but i'm saying on average you're going to have almost double the attack stat of william wallace and no health unfortunately but you're going to have 29% defense on average compared to 10% health. I would rather have 29% defense than 10% health. That's just me. And 20% of that is guaranteed, right? That's on the relic. You don't even have to question that. And it's also worth noting that 30% of Alex's attack is also guaranteed, right? So there's never a scenario where Alex will have less attack than William Wallace. All else things equal, right? You'll always have more. Uh, it's just how much more will depend on the shielding factor on the sh on the field also again more march speed right literally faster alex is literally faster literally has more attack and i think his defense stat is better than the health stat on william wallace now i don't want to confuse people because that always like this is what i always have to think about what i'm saying as a youtuber in general health is a better stat than defense but we're talking about three to one right do you want 30 percent defense or 10 percent health i'll take 30 percent defense every time it's just better it's just better there's more of it right unless you already have an absurd amount of defense then like sure you'd go for the health but like 99 percent of the time you'd rather have 30 percent defense over 10 percent health okay so from a pure stat perspective alexander the great is just better than willie wallace he's got more stats that's not my opinion you can look at it right there it's right there he has more stats his stats are better he is faster in the open field his instant proc damage is easier to use and that's not where his advantages end either because if he is expertise you have a 30 percent damage taken increase to three nearby enemies for four seconds that's an insane debuff that's an insane debuff that is one of the best debuffs in the game it is not aoe it's not like this debuff casts in a cone or anything it just chooses the three nearest enemies and they just take 30 percent more damage for four seconds it's insane okay and also his second skill makes him and by extension liu che immune to all damage reducing debuffs and i've talked about this in a previous video but all enemy liu che's that you're fighting have on their fourth skill a chance to reduce your all damage and all yue liang's with their active skill have a chance to reduce your all damage okay so two of the most powerful literally the two most powerful commanders in the game right now both have debuffs that reduce all damage and alex is immune to that literally immune you literally it will never work okay now there's other things that can be reduced but those debuffs specifically you are immune to with alex and by extension your liu che and that is not the case from william wallace okay another advantage that alex has is that many old players already have him okay and that's the big thing here is that a lot of players already have alex many new players might not but a lot of old players do and so in this scenario and i've kind of painted a doom and gloom picture here for william wallace and i didn't really mean to do that but what we've discovered is that if we're comparing Willie Mollis to Alexander the Great, my anecdotal experience is that Liu Che Alex performed slightly better in my last KVK 
and we'll see how he does for the rest of my current kvk i will try to do some liuche alex testing in this kvk in my king's land to see how that does maybe it's because we're doing apples to oranges here but even if you throw my anecdotal results out the window which are real results they're real fighting results so like you know i will take real fighting results over 1v1 test results any day it's just real right but i just gave you guys a ridiculous amount of info so let me recap really quick okay the pros of william wallace are that he's great at dueling he's very consistent with his results he has an aoe rage debuff with liu che secondary with his smite talent which is insane you don't need to expertise him at 5551 or 5515 probably is better you can use him he's great you don't need the expertise at all he'll probably age better than alexander the great he's decent in canyon at least at the time of recording this because of the offlane and he also can probably be used in rallies although we'll have to wait and see i'll show you some rally results in just a minute the pros of alex however are that his instant proc damage is easier to use he gets similar or better trades than William Wallace when paired with Liu Che as a secondary, Liu Che being the primary. He literally just has more stats than William Wallace. He has more March speed than William Wallace. His damage, his all damage can't be lowered, which by extension Liu Che's cannot. You might already have Alexander the Great as well. And his debuff is actually insane. And it supports all your other armies, which is very, very good. So you can compare the pros for Alexander the Great to, to the pros of William Wallace, and you can come to the conclusion, do you bench your Alex or not? I don't have a conclusive answer for you at the time of recording this. I'm going to go back to using my Alex and see how that does. Comparing my KVK results right now to last KVK, it seems like Alex might perform a little bit better. At worst though, I would say they probably perform similar, right? I think they probably perform similar. And even if William Wallace performs like 5% better, is it worth benching Alex and dumping 690 sculptures or, you know, 380 sculpture, whatever you have? I don't really know. I don't really know. I probably wouldn't. If I was a free to play player and I already had Liu Che Alex, I would probably just continue to use Liu Che Alex. If I'm being completely honest with you guys. Yes, you lose the rage debuff here, but you're gaining a massive damage taken increased debuff on the active skill from Alex. So like it's a trade off you're going to have to make. And also Alex is just easier to use with the instant proc. Now, with that being said, okay, again, a lot of people might disagree with me, but that's just that's just the data that I have. That's just my experience with William Wallace. Okay. He's great. Is he significantly better than Alex? I don't think he is. I think he's just maybe at best. He's maybe a little bit better than Alex with Liu Che. And again, I want to be very clear. William Wallace could age much better than Alex. And in which case, like down the line, he might be a must have commander, right? That like, it's too early to say, but for right now, I don't know if benching the Alex is required. Now with that being said, does that mean Willie Wallace is dead in the water? Well, um, you have to ask like, what else would you bench? If not the Alex, right? You're not benching the Liu Che. You're just not, and you're not benching the CBO prime. You're just not, it's just not going to happen. Okay. So the question is, do you bench the Guan? And if you bench the Guan, what are the implications of that? Well, if you bench Guan, then you could do one of two things. You could do William Wallace primary, Liu Che secondary. And then you could do Scipio with Alex, which is a March that a lot of people used to use. And now that Alex has a double relic, it's even better than it was before. The downside of that is that the synergy with Alex is that his instant proc happens more often with Liu Che. And so you would want to pair them together. So in that scenario, you ask yourself, okay, well, if you did Liu Che Alex, then what would you do with Scipio? Well, you could do Scipio prime primary with William Wallace secondary, or would you do vice versa? Well, I don't think you would do vice versa because I don't think the smite tree is very good for CPU prime. I just don't think it is killing blow requires smite damage, fight or flight requires smite damage. Thunderous smite requires smite damage. So there's a lot of things in here that like, I don't think you necessarily would want for CPO prime. And so in that case, then you would do CPO prime primary William Wallace secondary. And if you did that, would that be a good March? Yes. The question is, would William Wallace outperform Guan? And that is the question that people are asking. And honestly, I don't think so. I really don't. Personally, I Guan CPO, and I don't this it feels like my third KVK in a row that I'm saying this, but my Guan CPO pops off. It is so good. It I feel like as time goes on, more and more people doubt Guan, but I just don't see the data. There's no I, every single KVK, my Guan CPO pops off consistently. It is always getting me good results. And so if you're going to make the claim that CPO with William Wallace would be a better choice, it has to be a strong one because the Guan CPO pairing, the, the synergy here is insane. It is literally double AOE, double debuff, so much bonus damage, double March speed, like tons of attack, tons of health, like it, bonuses to skill damage on both expertises here. This one requires shielding, but like all in all, this synergy here is insane. So let's compare William Wallace to Guan to see which would be a better 
compare with CPU Prime. Okay, the first thing I'm going to look at here is the damage factor, right? Because we have to consider like how much actual damage are you doing with your active skills for all of these commanders? Now I threw an Alexander the Great here. Everyone kind of knows that like the instant proc on Alex is, I mean, most of the time it's going to only pop one in every 10 turns, even with Liu Che. Maybe it's like once every eight or nine turns, something like that. But like at best, it'll pop twice in a, in a 10 turn period. But like, I mean, unless you get super lucky, it's not going to pop more than that. And again, the benefit of this instant proc is not how high the damage factor is, but it's just how often you'll get it going in and out before your rage even caps, right? Or before it even reaches a thousand. So really like you could see that the Alexander the Great damage output isn't as high as everything else here when we're talking about just raw damage factor, right? And in blue, we see like the low end damage here and we have 2880 and you might ask, well, Amir, how'd you get to that? Well, the worst thing that could happen would be that your active skill hits a target that's not hitting you, right? So you actually don't get this 300. It would be just 2400, but it would be boosted by 20%. And let's say you're unlucky and you actually don't get Lion of the North, or maybe it's on cooldown or something like that. You don't get this 40%. Like literally worst case scenario would be 2,400 times 1 1.2. Like that's, that's worst, worst case scenario. Right. And again, this is napkin math. Okay. So I'm not actually going to like break down the battle formula and all that stuff. Okay. Cause there's way too many variables there, but we're just trying to compare like apples to apples here on the high end, you would get 4740. And that would be that like you're hitting three targets with the second half of your active skill. You're getting Lion of the North. You're getting all the buffs from the fourth skill, like best case scenario it's uh, 4740 okay um with Guan Yu worst case scenario is 2000 right you hit one target with your active skill and you lose the 50 50 on the fourth skill right and that's it right you have no shield active so there's no bonus to skill damage like that's worst case scenario is the 2000 damage factor right it's pretty straightforward this is a little misleading because the average here I actually just calculated the uh, hitting two targets with your AoE and getting about 50 percent value from the fourth skill and same thing here except this gets the full 1400 okay and so if we look at the damage factor again I want to be very clear this is napkin math okay but what you can see is that the high end for Guan Yu is higher than William Wallace but the low end is lower and the average pretty close right you do kind of outperform with Guan Yu if you hit th two targets as opposed to like the average from William Wallace but I think that if we look at this this kind of explains why William Wallace is more consistent right it's just tighter right the high end and low end are closer whereas it swings kind of dramatically for Guan Yu depending on how many targets you're hitting in this and that if you're consistently hitting three targets then you will consistently be outperforming with Guan Yu compared to your best case scenario with William Wallace right like it's just that's it's a thousand higher a thousand thirty five higher right and then we can also go back to the stats chart so if we look at attack well William Wallace has 30 Guan Yu has 35 because he now has a relic if we compare the 10 percent health well Guan Yu has 10 percent defense so the 10 percent health is better and if we look at the March speed we have 20 percent March speed on William Wallace and 15 on Guan Yu Guan Yu does have a little bit of March speed on his expertise when he like leaves a structure or something like that I'm not counting that because it's like very conditional but um in general okay we have slightly slightly more attack on Guan Yu and you're trading health for defense with a little bit more March speed so from a stats perspective William Wallace I would say is better right he's he's faster uh his his health is better than the defense and yeah you lose five percent attack but like that's not that big of a deal but here's the thing with Guan like I said if you are consistently hitting two or three targets you'll probably be on average outperforming the active skill on William Wallace also if you're doing CBO with William Wallace William Wallace is the secondary which means he actually doesn't have any debuffs there's no debuffs on any of the skills here whereas Guan has a silence so yeah AOE silence three seconds this has historically been extremely powerful that has not changed this is still extremely powerful and again when you do Guan with CPO you have the skill tree on Guan Yu which just gives you a nice rage engine you have bonuses to skill damage here which is really really nice you take less skill damage as well so we love to see that so all in all is CPO with William Wallace better than Guan Yu well of course I didn't try that I'm not going to try that but again we run into a scenario where like it doesn't seem apparent to me like there's nothing on his kit that would suggest that he would outperform Guan Yu in my opinion right again his stats are slightly better with the health trade for defense and he's slightly faster but like I think the active skill on Guan Yu is better even if it does vary a little bit more and the silence is great the skill tree is great I think the synergy with CPO is kind of undefeated which is kind of a boring answer right like Guan CPO is remaining unchanged for how many years now like it's kind of boring to say that but I just wouldn't like again we'll have to wait you know if other people are going to test this that's great I'm probably not going to test it it doesn't seem like that intuitive to me again I could be wrong here but to me it seems like if you're going to run William Wallace right now it's going to be with Liu Che I, I mean I could be wrong I could be wrong but that is my early uh, analysis of the William Wallace versus Guan Yu pairing here of course there's Gorgo as well uh I don't I think William Wallace is just a better Gorgo in the field I mean she does do nice things here 
she's got the defense tree lower damage outputs on the active skill more attack but no march speed and no health right i mean look gorgo is good but she's real slow she's real slow right like really slow like she's slower than yuge leong which is saying a lot yuge leong is insanely slow so look i've i have uh underestimated gorgo in the past but i just don't i just don't see it i don't see people like it, it just doesn't make sense to me okay so all in all if you're running one infantry march and it's CPO with Liu Che. I think you probably don't need William Wallace. I mean, you have a double AOE here. The stat distribution is insane. It's literally faster, right? I think it's fine. If you're only running one infantry march, I don't really think the meta changes. And even if you want to make the argument that like William Wallace is better than CPO, again, I don't think it would be by, by very much, especially because this AOE here and the health reduction, it's wild. Okay. This active skill, again, I think is better than the active skill in William Wallace. That's just me. At best, they're comparable. Okay. At best, they're comparable. And so is it worth benching the CPO for the Willie Wallace? I personally don't think so. That's just me. Could be wrong. So if you're running one infantry pairing, I think Liu Che and CPO probably fine. If you're running two infantry pairs and you already have Alexander the Great, Liu Che with Alex and Guan with CPO, I think you're fine. I still don't think you need the William Wallace. If you have Guan with CPO and you've been using Liu Che with Gorgo and you want to bench the Gorgo for William Wallace, that I think will be an improvement. You'll be faster. You'll be dealing more damage. There's more synergy there. You have the smite tree. You've got the debuff on the smite tree. That's an improvement for sure. Also, if you have Liu Che and you don't have Alex, William Wallace will probably get you there with a cheaper investment, right? 5515 or 5551. You'll probably get a similar performance to your Alexander the Great. That would be expertise with a non-maxed William. Okay. So keep that in mind. I think that it is important for those budget build players. I guess the real question is if all you have is Liu Che, do you get William Wallace or do you get CPO prime? And that's a real good question. Again, I don't, I don't know. I mean, William Wallace might age better, but I just hate that he has no AOE. He has no debuffs outside of territory. He's literally slower. His smite tree is more, has more synergy than the support tree on CPO prime, but also CPO prime. I feel like you could pair with more things right in the future. If we do ever get more skill damage infantry, which at this point is looking unlikely, but if we do CPO will still be there. I don't know. It's so hard to say. I mean, I guess, I guess I would probably go for CPO, right? Cause even CPO, you could do like a five, 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 one. That's a budget build and you'll be okay. And then you could max out the Liu Che and, and you just have a double AOE infantry pair. It's fine. The way that I'm looking at William Wallace is that he's like a slightly more exciting Huo in my mind. Like he's just, he's a little bit better but he doesn't, he's not like, he's not Liu Che is what I'm trying to say. He's not Liu Che. He's not Zhuge Liang. Okay. He's not a game changing commander. He's not, you know, completely shifting the meta around. Is he good? Yes. He's very good. Are people going to use him a lot? Yes. They're going to use him a lot. Can he age really well? Probably. He probably will. But right now I would say he's like an A plus commander. I think he just, he like just misses that S tier. I think he's just like so close. Right? So I want to be very clear. Like William Wallace is great. Is he a must have commander? I don't know if he's a must have commander. I don't think he really is. Certainly he will find your way into a two March lineup. If you don't have Alex though, for sure. And he's a little bit cheaper than Alex as well. Okay. Now I did say earlier that I would show off some, uh, rally reports here. And here you can see, we actually rallied the pass against an Eleanor and we had Carl use his William Wallace Liu Che going up against the pass. And, uh, ooh, I mean, brother, I mean, like, Hey, Hey, I mean, look, that's kind of nuts that's kind of nuts now look i mean boys this is the uh this is the breakdown here of the support skills um it's it's kind of an insane trade here okay you can take you could pause and look at what they've got like even if we just come here and look at like the rally versus garrison trade it's it's nuts right like the trade is wild now of course for these you would get hold the line you would not get the march speed okay just keep that in mind but uh yeah we got some we got some wildness over here okay these people are probably getting hit by that aoe somehow even though it's a pass rally and like why would you stand right at the gate but like whoa dude like did this guy try to swarm it like what what is happening here are these guys did they try swarming it they must have right because this is like you're not putting these in the past right they must have tried to swarm it that's insane i don't know why they would even do that some of these obviously were nearby armies looking at another report here uh same thing carl's willie mollus luce uh yeah i mean three to one kill point trade on the rally versus garrison but like the total report was like five to one question mark is this a thing like what do we even need CPO Emilianus? Like, uh, uh, what is happening here? This is actually kind of crazy. These guys are obvious. Like they must be swarming it, right? 
why would you brother stop it would it really um clearly some of these weren't swarming they were just nearby hopefully hopefully they weren't swarming with this um but yeah interesting uh outcome here definitely very interested to see now of course if you want to look at Carl's equipment he's actual giga chad right i mean five 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 talent 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 like everything is talented right uh he doesn't have the kvk helmet but like everything else is pretty much best in slot so yeah and also this didn't have the necklace right like he's using horn instead of necklace so kind of insane this is the formation he has crazy good armaments as well three out of five are rares one is the legendary i think this is the one from the kvk shop so yeah lots of health here i mean giga chad now why don't we just watch a city rally here we've got carl launch that William Wallace Lute rally against this player who is I think a 59 million power player not a crazy strong player by any means but we did launch a uh, rally here against the city and we saw what happens when a bunch of players swarm it so one thing that we can learn from this swarm uh, and I'll take a look at the battle report after but uh probably like uh, the players that are swarming here with like the Minamoto William like if you're not using like a massive army capacity like this right here these are dying okay the the minimoto's dead already like this is they're dying okay don't do that because <laughs> you're gonna make the trade crazy all right um now there are some whales here like this jet player I actually don't know if they're if they're well or not but they are pretty good this leonida player i think is solid as well so like some of these marches will probably trade positive against the william wallace but like if you're gonna hit it with a smaller march like you're 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 crazy you're crazy okay especially because this player is like not um and no offense but like a 59 million power player not necessarily worth sacrificing a ton of your troops for no offense again no offense i get that they're like this is a noble cause they want to save the friend totally get it right it is a game and you want to play with your friends um but yeah i don't know if swarming this down was the play especially because we're pretty far from the city but you can see i'm 84 kilometers away right like so we're pretty far so i don't know probably don't swarm it but anyway here's the report here we have 156,000 deads in the rally 894,000 deads on the garrison and swarmer troops 26 million kill points for the rally 60 million kill points for the garrison and swarmers so definitely a positive trade here for carl with the nice city rally taking a look at the actual rally versus garrison you can see the 1.5 million power loss for the rally and 2.8 million power loss for the garrison so definitely a huge negative trade for the garrison there taking a look at that kent player uh you can see they were the one with the minimum of william that died right away um again 210,000 troops not what you want to use to swarm a rally especially not carl's william wallace you can see the kill point trade here was insane i mean it literally took 43,000 deads from that which is wild here we have that jet player the nevsky william actually traded about even uh with the carl rally here so we have 97,000 sevs for the swarmer 84,000 sevs for the william wallace rally here's that kent player again with 210,000. uh not great we see 68,000 deads here 69,000 deads uh, 170,000 sev wounds here so kill point trade massive favor in the form of the rally um we see that's that same uh report from earlier here we have the jet player again with liu Chai alex they actually trade slightly positive here a little bit less sev wounds compared to the rally which is pretty good and next we have that leonida player we see a pretty negative trade here we see a two to one almost trade in favor of the rally which is kind of surprising because they have 416,000 troops but they took more sev wounds and got less kill points so i don't know how that happened there here we see that leonida player again 418,000 troops but this is their Liu Che William Wallace and they trade positive here double the kill points which is nice less sev wounds overall very good stuff here we have Yuge Liang with Boudica trading pretty negative we see way more kill points on the side of the rally and less sev wounds as well here we have the Guan CPO and that actually uh went negative as well more sev wounds less kill points taking a look at Leonida again they almost traded positive they have more sev wounds than the rally and less kill points here we have a Martel Ethelflaed this Kent player took 64,000 dead troops horrible trade here for the Charles Martel don't do that here we have the Kent player again 62,000 deads okay Leonida again we see a positive trade here for Leonida with the Gorgo Alex so we've got 27,000 sev wounds to 51 almost twice the kill point so positive trade there for the Gorgo Alex which is nice to see I mean not really for me because I'm in Carl's Alliance so I'm mad about that but anyway just anecdotally here's another um report on a city so we had Marwan with his William Wallace Liu Che 373,000 units against the 1.1 million for the city and trading positive 
here with the kill points so kind of nuts there kind of nuts pretty cool pretty cool all right that's pretty crazy anyway guys that's gonna do it for the video hopefully you found this informative and useful and entertaining with the rallies at the end there if you did drop a thumbs up on the video it really helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it and consider subscribing and clicking the bell down below i really would love to hit 100 000 subscribers one of these days i can only do it with the help of you guys and of course you can always unsub later if you stop playing rise of kingdoms let me know in the comment section below what you think of william wallace have you had a completely different experience with him are you absolutely dominating on the battlefield with him do you think that he's a little bit lackluster let me know what your honest thoughts are in the comments section below because i don't know if the dueling reports that i've been seeing floating around youtube are necessarily super representative of how i'm experiencing him in the open field he's great but he's not a mega improvement over alexander the great from my perspective guys with that being said thank you so much for watching this has been omni arc i will talk to you guys again soon peace